Hi guys, Horus here for another Horoscope Zine live session and today I will try to play something that can relate to classic Dungeons and Dragons old school, really old school, but with like a modern touch like I will try to do a modern approach uh, taking some ideas from games like Knave and other modern OSR rule sets. So basically I will be using as my background this beautiful map. This map is from Blackmore series and uh, there are some books that were printed by TSR during the 80s. The DA series that feature Blackmore. And these books are awesome. And uh, I think that every DA uh, series book have this hex crawl map. Because I will, I will try to do some hex crawl using some ideas from old school D&D but also with a modern approach uh, that we can find in games like Knave, for example. And uh, just for... Uh, I will use Brillis, also Brillis Cyclopedia just as a reference. Uh, just in case I need to uh, get some idea to hack or modify and I will keep it uh, here because maybe I can use it. So uh, first step is to create a character but uh, I want to do a fast play, a fast game so uh, I will start rolling the character's attributes, but uh, you will see that the adjustments for each attribute will be a bit different, more like the Knave way, other than the classic D&D uh, from Frank Menzer era, like during the 80s. And uh, anyway, we'll start rolling some 3d6 for the attributes. And uh, the attributes will be like uh, a regular uh, D&D character. Uh, strength, str for strength. And I will roll 3d6. Uh, a 6, a 3 is a 9 plus one is a 10 and then I will roll for dexterity so I take the 3d6 a 3 plus a 2 is a 5 plus a 3 is an 8 and for the next attribute that is constitution I have a 5 plus 2 is a 7 so the next attribute will be intelligence and we have a 12 plus 1 is a 13 and the next is Wisdom and a 3 plus a 2 is a 5 and <coughs> the last attribute will be Charisma and these are uh, an 8 plus a 5, a 9, 10 11, 12, 13 So, uh, 
what we have here is the attribute rollet and uh, according to the classic DND uh, we have the adjustment tables that uh, you can uh, add some adjustment or subtract some adjustments depending on the character attribute value but in this case we will try to do something different we will try to do like this uh, we take the attribute and subtract from 10 and divide by 2 so uh, 10 minus 10 is a 0 so there is no adjustment dexterity 8 so uh, 10 minus 8 is a minus 2 divided by 2 is a minus 1 the same for 7 I think uh, because uh, 10 uh, 7 minus 10 is a minus 3 divided by 2 is a 1.5 it's almost like this and a 13 uh, minus 10 is a 3 divided by 2 1.5 that is a plus 1 so uh, a 5 will be uh, a 5 minus 10 is a minus 5 divided by 2 will be like a minus 2 I am, I am not brilliant in I am, I am not a brilliant guy in mathematics but this is like this is almost uh, like this so a 13 will be a plus 1 so uh, I think that uh, I can't be um, uh, a fighter, but maybe I can be um, a wizard apprentice, uh, or because my dexterity and my constitutions aren't uh, bad, uh, bad numbers and my wisdom is very poor and I think that I am like an apprentice but unlike uh, different from basic D&D that you can choose between classes uh, uh, this will be a classless character but uh, I am considering that this guy is like an apprentice in the wizardry art like uh, an a pen a, a, like an uh, a young apprentice in the sorcerer's art so this guy will be an apprentice uh, colored uh, let me see i will try to do something inspired by appendix and uh, reference like robert a howard's conan and michael moorcock's eric and Fritz Labors, Lankmar. So this guy can be called Zogma, the apprentice. So this guy is called Zogma, the apprentice. So that's it and uh, the character is like this right so we can start our session and i will try to improvise a lot we'll try to use my creativity and uh, we'll try to not uh, stick to the rules because uh, i will try to improvise and uh, sometimes when we stick to the rules we can be uh, we can test uh, some mechanics that are very important to stress and test for a game designer and i try to make some games and uh, for me it's important to uh, uh, like do not follow the rules one 
100% all the time. So let's imagine that Zogma, the apprentice, is uh, like uh, living in the wizard's watch, like this place in the map. And also, I won't stick to uh, what the setting is 100% because uh, I think that uh, we can improvise a lot and the wizard's watch uh, for, for this session, for this interpretation can be like uh, a wizard tower surrounded by a huge uh, um, a huge stone wall and uh, inside it there is a ruler maybe a powerful wizard and there is like a citadel around the tower and some people live inside it and Zogma the apprentice like uh, learned some tricks with um, like a follower of this powerful wizard uh, like Zogma never saw this powerful wizard but some of uh, his followers uh, teach Zogma some tricks and also as this character is not like a, 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 a wizard or a magic user by the book and I will consider that Zogima can use some spells, but like uh, he have so he has some uh, manuscripts. Like this guy has his personal grimoire, and um, there are some scrolls also in which uh, this guy pens some of his basic tricks because. This guy is an apprentice. So, uh, different from D&D that uh, the spells have to be memorized, this guy can cast any spell if he found like, the spell written in something like a parchment or a scroll or another grimoire or an ancient book or... Uh, some uh, bizarre, sinister manuscript. So, uh, Zogma have some uh, basic tricks, but uh, he have to use all those tricks um, while uh, they, uh, they are writing on uh, some scrolls. And when this guy uses uh, these scrolls, the the writing vanishes and uh, he have to uh, find other scrolls in order to keep using his spells and like let's say that uh, Zogima have some uh, spells like let me see because we have to improvise and Zogima as an apprentice and maybe not well traveled uh, have only a few tricks like um, throwing bolts of energy like uh, one scroll one scroll with um, energy bolts and when Zogima reads this scroll, he can manage to aim with his finger and shoot a bolt of energy, doing some d6 or d8 damage. And there is another scroll that uh, Zogma can use to stay invisible. Invisible. Ability. So when Zogma reads this scroll, he can stay invisible for a short time. And there is also a scroll that Zogma can use to resist the power of uh, another wizard that will try to read or charm his mind. So uh, I will 
the, um, note down that this is a mind resistance mind resistance uh, like trick so Zogma is an apprentice he can manage to use the the scrolls and uh, these are the powers this this guy have by now and we are doing a live and uh, we can uh, take part on this live by writing uh, on our live chat and there is a message and the person is saying love your stuff you you are you have given me a quest now the quest for me is to learn portuguese language so i can enjoy your other content bronhitis Thanks for your message. Yeah, some content in this channel is uh, is, is almost Portuguese. Be, but we are trying to do more English content for you guys that speak English. So sorry, my English is not so perfect. But I am trying to improve as I do this kind of content. Because I love this game. I love to play and I love to share what I like, what I love. So uh, let's play. Let's do some improvisation here. Thanks, Bron Hittis. Your message was super cool. And also, if you guys like this, leave your like and subscribe into our channel because we are always releasing some content. So, uh, we say that Zogma is living in this place, the Wizard's Watch, like a citadel and inside it there's, there is a huge wizard tower. So, uh, we begin our game here. And this will be like a hex scroll game. And uh, Zogma uh, was uh, like uh, his his mentor requested him to uh, do something to please the wizard that lives in the tower. Zogma must travel to the egg's nest, a very dangerous place and there <coughs> Zogma must search for another sorcerer called Kishore like this guy is called Kishore like this Kishore and Kishore seems to be a sorcerer and uh, Zogima did not do some questions he just obeyed his master and seems that the wizard is calling Kishore for like an audience or something like this and uh, Zogma must travel and search for Kishore at the eggs, the, the eggs nest, right? So uh, Zogma have some um, silver coins in his pouch, and he will take um, a ship and travel uh, towards this um, this Black Sea and try to reach this place and uh, like Zogima have some silver coins and leave these coins with the uh, captain of this ship and maybe this can be a ship with uh, huge sails and this ship is uh, crossing the Black Sea and like uh, no, we, we can do some hex crawl uh, procedures like uh, each hex has uh, 12 miles and we can consider that uh, a ship like this uh, can travel like 
uh, hundred uh, hundred miles a day in uh, in the normal condition and as I said we will try to improvise a lot and let's see the condition of the weather before we uh, jump into this ship because this can uh, influence our travel and let's see what will happen like we take a D20 and row and I'm doing this super improvise in this situation because there is no rule uh, that can uh, be used to improvise at the same time uh, that uh, we can uh, do something very uh, very loose not sti not sticking to the rules and uh, you 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 will find some rules to roll the weather uh, in the roller cyclopedia. If you if you take a look at roller cyclopedia, you, uh, I'm pretty sure you will find some tables to roll the weather. But I will improvise, and there is no rule for this. And I will take a d20 and roll, and the highest the number the the worst condition is the weather simple as that and let's see what we have oh a ruler is a 20 <laughs> under these conditions maybe zogma can travel because they're they're, they're like uh, occurring some super heavy storms thunderstorms and it's not possible to travel and to cross the Black Sea under those conditions so uh, Zogma will have to um, pay some um, some silver to the captain to stay inside the ship but did not travel uh, let's let's say that the the wizard's watch the wizard citadel is away from the port in which Zogma is trying to uh, jump into this, the, the ship. So Zogma prefers to stay there in the port and pay uh, some silver to the captain uh, instead of getting back and uh, hear some uh, some words from his uh, mentor oh why you came back and so on so uh, zogma will stay in the port and wait for a better weather and let's say we are using we are using some money why not bro for some silver coins like uh, 3d6 can be very handy and uh, like or money will be uh, six, seven, eight, like um, eight silver coins, right? And uh, we already used uh, like four silver coins to get into the ship, and we will spend one silver coin to stay inside the ship, like. Um, an, an inn or like uh, instead of staying inside a tavern uh, or um, an inn in the land we will stay inside the ship and pay one silver coin for this now we have seven silver coins so that's it and uh, we hope the there will be a better weather the next day so we roll for it and another 20 you guys are the, the, this dice is kidding me it's not possible to roll 220 <laughs> okay so I will spend another silver coin inside the ship and maybe um, try to talk with some people inside the ship and try to uh, why not discover something about Keshor but uh, we are like uh, 
core and strength and dexterity and also constitution better to keep uh, protected from the severe storms raining down in this place but we have some charisma and maybe we can uh, try to uh, talk with the people aboard this ship and with caution uh, trying to discover uh, Kesher's uh, background so in order to do this uh, let's fix a difficulty score like uh, difficulty score can be uh, 15 like a uh, difficulty of 15 right and we will roll a d20 and add or plus one here because we have a nice charisma and let's see what will happen so I rolled a seven plus one is an eight. It's not possible to discover any information about Kashor. Maybe there are some merchants inside the ship and uh, the guys don't know about uh, another uh, sorcerer uh, like Kashor. Okay, we will wait for the next day and I hope we can uh, cross the Black Sea now. Let's check the weather. Oh, out of the screen. So we will roll here. Okay, uh, 15 uh, is like the storm continues, but it's possible to travel. Uh, the captain will be. Uh, very careful this guy must be very careful so maybe uh, this captain put some uh, some other man aboard this ship to make sure the travel will be safe and the guys will sail under some uh, hard conditions and uh, I say that a ship like this can uh, cross uh, like uh, almost a hundred miles a day in normal conditions, but the conditions are very adverse. So a uh, hundred miles can be can't be possible to uh, sail, but almost there, like. 18 or 7, uh, 80 or 70 um, can be uh, a nice number. So let's see uh, how much we can uh, travel a day. Like we are here at the wizard watch or near this place because, because we are in the port but in the coast. So uh, we will uh, cover one hex, two hexes, like uh, 20, uh, 24 miles, and then 36 miles, and then 48 miles, and then uh, 16 miles. 60 miles so uh, we are in in this place and is almost sundown and uh, like we eat something aboard the ship and the the sea is super um, uh, it's, 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 the, the travel is not under uh, good conditions and like the the waves are huge and uh, the captain says that we will stay near the coast at this place so we travel 60 miles and before the night came we stay here in this hex so uh, we are here and this place is called the blink dog bay like uh, maybe we can encounter some blink dogs. Uh, um, I I wish 
we don't encounter this encounter we don't encounter these creatures so uh, anyway we will be here for this night near the coast like in a very calm uh, place in the sea it's still raining and uh, if the if the weather is uh, uh, is better during the day the next day uh, we can uh, continue our travel so let's see what will happen because we will stay here during the night so a 10 a 50 50 50 result so uh, the weather is better like the rain is light and the guys will set the sails and uh, navigate uh, to the egg's nest here and the travel will be uh, 12 miles 24 miles 36 miles and 48 miles so uh, like after after the after lunch we arrive at the eggs the eggs nest so we are here we just arrived at this place and let's uh, as i said we we won't stick to the setting because we will try to improvise a lot and let's say the eggs nest is like a citadel uh, in the top of a hill and there is a small port on on the feet of this hill and we arrive there and uh, maybe this place is dangerous and maybe there are some bandits uh, like um, trying to take money from the people that arrive in this place and there will be a chance to be uh, robbed by those people and we can start using a d6 and there will be an encounter or um, the there will be an encounter in one or two so a tree is almost an encounter and uh, it's still daylight it's 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 noon uh, after lunch and then uh, we we can uh, perceive the guys like crowding near where the ships enter in this place and uh, zogma uh, look to the guys and think hey these guys can be thieves or bandits and I don't know if I will ask them about cash or maybe uh, go up to the citadel of Ig's nest and then over there try to find some clues about cash or so uh, we did uh, the first uh, chapter of this adventure doing a uh, small hex scroll like a sea crawl because we crossed the black sea and then uh, like in the next chapter in the next part of this video i would like to improvise uh, I like a urban crawl and we can improvise like um, drawing the citadel over here so uh, we are using some uh, post-its for the character attributes and we can draw some things to do like a urban crawl or a city crawl in order to find cash or why not so um, i will take this post-it and i will try to draw like a citadel in the top of this hill like a citadel for me there is an entrance with some towers and then there are the walls that protect this citadel 
and each corner of this large wall has a tower and maybe the citadel can be like an hexagon or a geometric floor floor plan like an hexagon like this we are improvising and I like to I like to draw so maybe our city will be like this and also uh, seems that uh, seems that this citadel has some exits like a north exit and a west exit hey hey Emerson how are you my friend Emerson is here and we are live we can uh, say something in the chat because we are live I hope Emerson you are good and so there is an entrance to the south and maybe an entrance uh, to the west and also another entrance to the north right and uh, we can use some thick tip pen to uh, draw it the citadel better and see the drawing lines better so it's nice that a citadel can fit into a post-it and part of my joy in playing is like that I can draw so uh, there are uh, maybe uh, the well, no uh, I said we, we can we can do some urban crawl so let's divide the citadel in some sectors and uh, um, like there will be a central area like the northern area the western portion of this place um, and also the south and um, eastern portion of this place one two three four five um, five uh, areas and uh, in order to do uh, some rows uh, and, and take this procedure uh, like an easy task we, we will draw some D10 and we can use like the salt area is one or two and three or four the eastern area uh, the northern will be five or six seven or eight for the western and the central area will be a nine or ten so that's it we have um, a citadel divided by areas and uh, the drawing will be like this and we can th there is a there is a way to the port there's a northern entrance and the, the western entrance and this is the eggs nest the eggs nest right and that's it so in order to do a, a city crawl or urban crawl like um, part of this adventure we start by arriving at this place and let's say we have to spend one silver coin to enter the city so now we have just five silver coins okay and we will start by uh, asking people about cashier so maybe it will be a good idea to go downtown because uh, we can see that 
there is a, an open area in the, in the city's downtown. So we will go over there and start by asking about Kesher, but in a very careful way. And Zogima have some charisma to do this. And uh, let's say uh, people can have some idea about this strange name. And the difficulty score will be like uh, 13. Like uh, 13, right? This will be our difficulty score, and we will roll and add a plus one. So we roll the 10 plus one is an 11. So I will interpret this like uh, no one knows Kesher uh, personally, no one can uh, accompany us uh, and. Uh, find Kesher, but some guys know that Kesher lives like in the uh, northern sector. So Ruda 5 and uh, Kesher is like uh, living in the northern uh, sector. Like we can use some highlighters also, I like some neon colors and we can use this to uh, highlight this area and uh, the information is uh, maybe there are some people in the northern portion of the citadel that knows Kesher and I don't know but maybe the northern portion of this citadel can be a place for um, the citadel's council and also the, the seat of power of this citadel and also uh, the place for uh, nobles and uh, uh, improvising and thinking about this maybe this is a well guarded place maybe the most fortified and protected area in the citadel and uh, we will try to go over there and uh, find some information about Kesher but uh, this is a very dangerous place and we can be robbed and while we are trying to find information about Kesher downtown uh, we can be robbed. Like there is a uh, one, two, or three chance in a D8 to be robbed. And let's see what will happen. Hey, we rolled a three, so we are we are being robbed. And how many silver coins these guys managed to rob from us? We have only silver coins, like uh, rolling uh, D4, um, we will find out how many silver coins were stolen. So we are just improvising, there is no rule for this. And the reason I like to play, it's, it's because we don't have to stick to the rules, we can do some very loose and very free and super fun to do. And let's see how... Oh, instead of rolling a d4, let, let's do something very funny. We, we will roll a d6, because if we roll a 6, we will be out of money and maybe caught by the thieves. Because in a, in a, in a roll of a 6, the bandits like capture us and let's see what will happen. This can be very fun and I will have to improvise a lot over this. And let's see how much uh, silver coins were stolen. Ah, only three silver coins. I was hoping we were kidnapped. But okay, we only have two silver coins left. And uh, Zogma uh, 
like is counting his silver and hey, uh, seems that I was robbed and my pouch is like loose in my belt, uh, I was robbed. So now I will take my pouch out of my belt and like um, like uh, hang uh, over my neck and put the pouch inside my chemise because uh, in doing this maybe I won't be robbed. Um, so Zogma uh, go north and let's see what will happen. Hey Joseph Lucas is in the chat so great stuff Horus, your videos are always fun. Thanks Joseph. So if you guys are enjoying this, hit like in this video and make sure you are subscribed into the channel because we are trying to do more English uh, videos like this. And sorry my English is not perfect, but the more English videos I do, I will be practicing it and hope to get my English better. So, uh, Zogma is downtown was robbed and <laughs> will, with the information he got, he will go uh, to the rich and more protected and maybe safe, I don't know, part of the citadel. Uh, when uh, we start to see some sentinels and guards and people uh, like um, uh, guarding the gates for some uh, stone buildings over here. And uh, we will try to find uh, a place like um, uh, maybe some guys some some merch merchants in the street like uh, uh, a guy selling some apples and some vegetables and uh, Zogma approach, approaches this uh, young guy and uh, begin to ask hey uh, do you know where uh, do, you, do you know if wizards um, live in this area. Uh, I am a foreigner and I am trying to find my friend Kashor and uh, some, some people say that uh, he is uh, like living as a wizard and studying in his lab and doing some stuff like this and maybe you can you can help me find where some some guys uh, like this live in this area. And another another friend of mine, Mike, is in the chat. Yes, Mike. Yes, Mike. Good night. Entendo nada, my está legal. Isso aí. And so Mike said that is not understanding nothing at all. So with my poor English. Uh, I, I know the difficulty to comprehend what I am doing, but Mike, fica frio porque o meu inglês aqui não é muito legal. Eu tô tentando fazer o meu melhor, right? So let's go and we ask the apple, the guy selling some apples and vegetables about if this place, um, uh, if in this place maybe he knows where a wizard lives and uh, there is a chance this uh, this little fella knows where a wizard lives and let's say it's a one two three or four or five chance in a D, uh, D12 and uh, and th these dice don't like to uh, stay over the table. And let's see what we got. A 10. So a 10 is a way higher than 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5. So the little fellow looks to, to Zogma and say, Yeah, I don't know where Wizards lives, but uh, maybe, maybe you can ask the guards. 
because this is uh, this is the where the riches live, the nobles. So you can ask the guards. Maybe they know where uh, wizards live. But hey, wizards are perilous persons. Uh, why why you are asking this? Why you are trying to find a wizard? And uh, Zogma says. Hey, uh, uh, it's my mentor's friend, and I'm trying to find him. So uh, I will ask a guard, but uh, thanks for helping me. And then Zogima walks over the street and finds like a guy clad in chain mail. And uh, this guy is like uh, hold, uh, is like uh, carrying a shield and a spear, and have. Uh, a nice, uh, a nice sword in his belt, and Zogima, thinking that this guy can be a guard, uh, asks him like, "Hey, uh, how are you? Uh, I am trying to find uh, a wizard that maybe lives in this portion of the citadel. Uh, can you help me?" And uh, let's see the reaction of this guy. Uh, I will roll a d6. And we all know that uh, Brawler's Cyclopedia have some also have some tables for ruling uh, for rolling the reaction of NPCs and monsters and so on. But let's improvise. Let, let's let's do uh, this like in a freestyle way. And um, the higher the number rolled, the better the reaction of this guard. And we will roll a d6 and we'll add a plus one here. And let's see the reaction of this guard. A four plus one is a five. Nice. So almost the maximum in this die. So the guard is, hey, uh, seems that you are you are a foreigner, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, there is a wizard that lives here. Uh, there are not so many wizards, but uh, the ones that obey the city's council can stay here. And uh, I don't know the reasons you are uh, trying to find this wizard, but you can find him in that tower, that dark tower. And you can see like a uh, dark stone block construction and there is a gate guarded by uh, three uh, well protected soldiers. And uh, the guard points to the guys and then go down the street and before you can say thanks, the guy is gone. So uh, we will approach very carefully this tower because uh, the guys that are protecting the gate uh, to this tower uh, aren't good looking. They are very, they are uh, protected by uh, chain mail armor and uh, the armor is like uh, darkened and some of the guys, uh, two of the guys wear also cloaks over their armor and they carry long swords, broad long swords and they in their belt. Uh, they aren't carrying uh, shields, uh, but they are like wearing helmets. And the helmet, uh, you feel you feel a strange feeling when we, we you try to look uh, into the eyes of those guys because the guys, uh, the guys have eyes protected by this uh, uh, like heavy helmet, and uh, those soldiers are seems to be more muscled than regular person, and you you begin to think uh, if those soldiers aren't. Uh, people like you, maybe they are monsters using the armor to hide themselves from uh, the folk in this place. And uh, if Kashor is a wizard, a sorcerer, maybe uh, Kashor have has some powers to control uh, those soldiers. And then. Uh, 
you you take some you you walk with care and approach the soldiers and and say the best way possible hey um, I'm looking for Kesher and uh, 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 I was sent b by my mentor and um, there is an invite that I should do personally to Kesher. Uh, those Kesher lives in this tower and like the soldiers uh, look each other and looks toward uh, Zogma and say in a very strange language Kesher is a very intelligent person maybe he can try to understand what the soldiers are saying and let's say this is a difficulty of 12 and let's see what will happen so I roll it out, uh, a 16, so uh, Zogma manages to understand what the soldiers are, are, are speaking. They, these soldiers aren't people like him, they are like humanoids that live in tribes and maybe are hired are mercenaries and uh, Zogma is afraid those soldiers can be hostile to him but mentioning Kashor the guys say yeah the master is inside the tower and unless you are wearing the the sign you can't enter or talk with the master and Zogima uh, don't carry anything like a sign or a tattoo or a brand and uh, nothing like that and uh, sh he will try to improvise hey Hey, but uh, my mentor is a friend and my mentor knows Kesher. Maybe my mentor have a sign, but I don't have a sign or tattoo or something like that. I don't carry any holy symbol, but uh, I must invite Kesher to a very important uh, event. So, uh, can can you guys talk with your master that Zogma, the apprentice, is here? And then uh, let's see if uh, Zogma's charisma can help him uh, in order to make those soldiers understand uh, the, the, the urgency of his uh, words. And it, it will be very difficult to convince those soldiers and maybe a difficulty of uh, 17 can represent the difficulty that Zogma will face a plus one so I don't know maybe it's out of the screen I will roll again oh a one a terrible role so the soldiers uh, begin to approach Zogima in a very unfriendly way they take their swords and the sword is made of a black steel a darkened steel and uh, Zogima is afraid and will try to run if the guys approach him like trying to attack him and there is a one, two or three chance the soldiers will try to attack Zogma. So a rule of the four, the guys aren't attacking but all of them are pointing their swords towards Zogma. And Zogima understands the message and there is no way he can convince the guys that uh, there is an important uh, question to be delivered to Kesher. So Zogma take his time and hey, uh, okay, I understand. Uh, I will try another day. And uh, like 
uh, evade the situation. And uh, Zogima is utterly frustrated because uh, his mentor asked him to find Kesher. Uh, he did find a tower and believes that a wizard named Kesher is living inside it, but this tower is guarded by some very unfriendly soldiers, maybe monsters, certainly mercenaries, and uh, the only way Zogima can deliver the message, maybe it will be climbing the tower. But Zogima uh, is like uh, a very poorly uh, agile person. Uh, he don't have uh, strength to climb the tower and his health is very poor and Zogima will try to make up a plan, maybe with the aid or the help of uh, some uh, some people that live in the citadel. So Zogma will try to rest and then other day uh, uh, try to uh, make up a way to get the message delivered. And uh, for this session I am done. I think that we did uh, a nice session with a lot of improvisation so we roll it or character and we use it the adjustment uh, uh, rules uh, like in knave or uh, modern osr games and uh, we roll it the attributes did the adjustment and uh, we started to play with a character that is classless. He's not exactly a wizard or a magic user, he's just an apprentice. And uh, we are like... Uh, uh, we, we, we did not use it... Uh, we did not use uh, some magic in this session, but Zogma still keeps his three scrolls, one for shooting energy bolts like magic missiles, one for uh, be invisible and another for mind resistance to do not be uh, charmed by other sorcerers. So, uh, first part of this adventure we did some sea crawl because it was a hex crawl crossing the Black Sea and uh, we did a very uh, fast-paced urban crawl. We divided the citadel in parts and uh, tried to explore the citadel. So, uh, as I said, I tried to improvise a lot and using my creativity because this is important for me. I am a game designer and I like to stress and try things that are not uh, related to uh, rule sets. Like, I like to mix different rules and improvise a lot to come out with some other ideas. And I am, uh, I think that I accomplished my task here when we, we have some fun in doing this. Also, I'd like to uh, send a big up to Eleni. Hi Eleni, how are you? Some of the guys in the chat are Portuguese speaking, like uh, we do some uh, videos in Portuguese in this channel, but we are trying to improve and do a lot of English videos as well. So uh, like this video and make sure you subscribe into our channel and uh, uh, if, if you are curious about because we are live and maybe you arrive it and jump it into the video right now we are using uh, Blackmore as the background for this uh, session right we use it this uh, this hex scroll map uh, to improvise over it and as I said we aren't being so strict so uh, 
we we uh, travel it to some places that can be different uh, from Dave Arneson uh, original manuscripts about Blackmore but it was fun so uh, that's it I hope you guys like it see you soon